All right. Well, welcome here again, uh, everyone. I'm uh, Michael from Non-Trivial uh, Trivia, and we're here uh, with our friends from Black History Manitoba and our special guests and uh, lots of uh, great people. I, I can see lots of faces in the, in the Zoom, and I know there's a lot more that we can't see because there's a limit, so uh, I'm really excited. So thanks. Uh, thank you all for coming. We're just going to start off with the land acknowledgement. Um, I'm beaming in from Treaty 1 territory, and I think most of us are, so uh, that's the, the lands that I'm acknowledging. Just want to acknowledge that we're on the lands of the Dakota, Treaty ODP, uh, Denny people in the homeland of the Muti Nation, and acknowledge, uh, you know, these lands were swindled under uh, Treaty 1, and it acknowledge the lands themselves. Uh, there's a lot of things that after these lands were swindled, there's things being done to this, these lands without consent. And uh, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, things could be a lot better. Uh, is there anyone else from other other lands that would like to unmute and acknowledge? Like, and is there anyone from out of Manitoba or that would like to, we'll just give space for that if there are. Oh, Lyle, go ahead. Ah, from the Stolo Nation of uh, Lower Mainland of Chilliwack, BC. Hey. Wow. You? Wow. Good. We're officially national. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We, we are. So um, here at Non-Trivial Trivia, what we're doing is we're learning, learning uh, underloved histories in a fun and creative way is kind of the way we're doing. So we, we've teamed up with uh, Black History Man Manitoba and we're focused on, you know, Black history of Canadians, not uh, what you would find on Google, which is all uh, stuff from our, you know, lovely uh, people down south. So, uh, and then we also do uh, Indigenous insights as mm -hmm. well. That's what we're about. So thank you there. Uh, you can find out more at uh, nontrivialtrivia.ca, I think. If I didn't get it right, don't worry, it's going to be in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to support Non-Trivial Trivia, there's a uh, Buy Me a Coffee page. And uh, if you want to come out and play um, through other events, we're going to probably we're going to try to do four of these uh, this year. So uh, just connect with us on the website and follow our socials, and then you'll be able to, uh, you won't miss uh, other events that are not part of Black History Month. Because uh, um, Yeah, and if you do um, support, just so you know, most of that money ends up at Tusme, our lovely friends, because uh, we like to give boy books as prizes. Uh, not tonight, though. Tonight, our prize, uh, thanks to uh, Manco Control Systems, are tickets to the Black History Night. Uh, Jets game uh, at uh, Canada Life Center. So somebody is going to win two tickets to that. That's for the winner. And the Woo! runner up is going to get one ticket to the game as well. So uh, you go, the three of you can meet tonight on Zoom and then you get to meet in person at the game. So uh, did I miss anything, Carrie? Nope, I think you got it all. All righty. So yeah, I'll um, turn it over to our lovely host and our special guest. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And um, thanks again, our great friends over at Non-Trivial Trivia. They provide a great platform for us to learn and share in a meaningful and fun way. So um, we're thankful for all of you joining. Again, my name is Rhonda Thompson. I'm part of Black History Manitoba, and I'm joined alongside Mrs. Mavis McLaren. She's also on the call. She's our chair, or, or sorry, our president of Black History Manitoba, and Nadia Thompson. She is our chair. So um, they're all part of the team this evening. And it is my great pleasure to welcome our special guest, uh, MLA J Jamie Moses. He is the MLA for St. Mattel. And um, he was um, very instrumental, if not the, the key indicator for uh, an emancipation bill being passed here in Manitoba, proclaiming Emancipation Day August 1st of every year here in Manitoba. So we're so excited. So uh, Jamie, welcome. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Oh, yes. My so pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'll let you do uh, an introduction for yourself. You can let oh, people know. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Jamie Moses, MLA for St. Vital. I was so happy to work with uh, Black History Manitoba, Rhonda, Nadia, Mrs. Ma uh, Mrs. Mavis McLaren, and the whole crew with uh, over the past few years, specifically on Emancipation Day. We just started discussing whether this, you know, something that community would really want and need, and there really were calls for a recognizing, uh, doing a better job of recognizing the history here in Canada. And I think it's really important milestone that we're able to bring forward a bill that was powered by community into the legislature, 
we went through the whole legislative process, which can be a churning thing, introduced in the in the spring of 2021, passed successfully and unanimously in the fall of 2021, which allowed us to celebrate for the first time officially in Manitoba in August of 2022, Emancipation Day, which was a huge success and huge kudos to uh, Black History Manitoba, uh, Comey as well, who helped in all other groups, helped to put on a huge successful event at the Human Rights Museum this past August. So that's just a very short, brief uh, summary of the Emancipation Day. As we know, Emancipation Day celebrates the uh, abolition of slavery in the, across the British Commonwealth, which included uh, uh, the land here in Canada. So, you know, very positive and milestone and historic event that we're now officially recognizing here in Manitoba. Absolutely, and thank you very much for all the hard work and efforts that you put towards that. So uh, this evening, we have decided to reference your speech that you provided for us at that event. And with a special thank you to Michael, who did a lot of the work to compile the work um, behind with the questions and everything that we're going to be going through today. So uh, we're going to start. So what we have to do, some housekeeping in regards to, um, for those that you of you that have never been on a trivia night with us, there's actually uh, two platforms that we use. So Zoom is where we conversate and we meet and greet. And and we also have crowd per. So you'll see on your screen that um, the crowd per uh, website is up. So what we're going to get you to do is um, take a look at the chat. The chat will show the link and you would have also seen it in the waiting room if you were in there. Um, it's going to be crowd.live and then there's going to be a code just behind it. Um, if you have two devices, that's fantastic. That's what we recommend. So you would keep your laptop for your Zoom platform, and then you can play it on your phone. It's really quick and easy to do it that way. You'll do a, a lot faster getting the answers because we'll all eventually get the answers because it's an open book trivia. But the faster you get the answer in to the app, the more points you get. So, and that's how we're going to determine our winners and runner up this morning or this evening. So, uh, let me know if there's any questions. You can unmute yourself really quick, but um, the information should be there in the chat. And then, so I'm going to be your quiz master this evening, along with Jamie, so we can chit chat about some of the answers to the quizzes, and he can give us a little bit of insight as well in areas that we can. Uh, like I said, for those that have joined since, we're going to keep this as close to an hour as possible, but we want you to come away with a lot more knowledge. And even if you don't win a prize, you'll still win a prize because knowledge is key and it is a gift for all of us. So um, I'm going to just swing on over to see, make sure I see some names popping up in my little quiz master. I call it the control central. So, okay. So I see we've actually gotten to our participant limit. So uh, we are going to just give us a moment. We are going to get that fixed. That's awesome. Cause that means that we've got a lot of people online. Um, so okay. Mike, if you yeah, would- I'll, I'll fix that up. So there's more people, there's people here who can't log in, right? Cool. Um, quite likely, yes. Yeah, if okay. uh, yeah, show of hands or thumbs up, if you are not able to log in, then at least we know how many people we're possibly looking for. So if you're on and you're trying to get onto the crowd per, then just give us a thumbs up or a hands up and let us know that you aren't able to come on because we've got 24 people on here. We've got 21 trying to get into the actual trivia. So that's great. I don't think we've ever had that problem before. So that's, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, okay, no problem, no problem. That's a first for us. So that's very exciting. Yeah, that's that, that, that's a round of applause right there. <laughs> we just you just never know, right? Because sometimes you have um, late registrations and such, and that's why we pointed individuals to the event, right? But I mean, this is okay. We can definitely get get over this little hump. So um, I just wanted to chit chat, and maybe I can pull Nadia into the conversation really quickly, because usually what we like to do is go through our events for the month. So um, maybe Nadia would like to unmute and kind of walk us through that and give us a chit chat on where we're going to be this month because there's a lot. Okay, going. I'm back. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't find my wallet. I got to borrow it for my wife. I, I had my car in the ditch at uh, at six o'clock and I'm here at seven, so things are a little frantic. But I, everyone's okay. Yeah, we were so Just thankful. Thank you, Dad, today. 
all right. <laughs> so thank you to Carrie for having the link to the calendar up. So for this week coming up, we our next event is on Friday night. We are pairing with Vincent Massey School and they are going to be highlighting um, doing our movie night this year. So they have a group within their school called Diversify and it's really wonderful that they are able to get together as a student union to put on different events during Black History Month. So um, the doors open for that event at six o'clock and the movie starts at seven and we are crossing our fingers that we will be screening Black Ice. So it kind of goes with our theme for tonight. Um, we're talking about hockey history. And if you haven't already seen it, this is, I, I recommend that you come out. I know it's at the school, but it's open to everyone. So you can come out, they'll have refreshments there for purchase that is a fundraiser for their group. Um, Black History Manitoba will be there as well. It is a free event, so you can just come in um, we've got some swag given away. If you weren't able to catch us yesterday, you can come uh, to that event and catch us there. So that's again, we, doors open at six, movies at seven o'clock. We are watching Black Ice. Come join us. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> hey, for the folks that were not able to log in, just try to log in now. And then uh, once, we, uh, once we're sure everyone's in, we'll start the game. We don't want to leave anyone behind. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we'll also so that means you'll, yeah. So if you're having trouble logging in now, uh, you, you will have to let us know, like come off mute or uh, raise your hand on the Zoom or, or something like that. For sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we've got 25 on the platform. Then. Wow, 25. <laughs> this is great. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, um, and Carrie, you can um, manage the chat and help. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Victor said that they are not able to log into uh, Crowdverse. So we definitely got one person waiting to get in. So Victor, keep us posted if that's working for you. Okay. Yeah, so if you try again now, it should be able um, to. Hello, I tried the end 172. And it says... Uh... The experience. Uh, Michael is suggesting. Yeah, the code. To, I'm not sure. Yeah, Michael's suggest suggesting to refresh your browser, see if that helps. What, like give it a beer or something? Give it some white rum. Yeah. So yeah, just try refreshing it. And just back. to confirm, is that the N1 or is that VNI? So maybe that would be the problem. I think somebody was putting one. So it's VNI72. Okay. If you click the link in the chat, that should work as well. But get on to, um, to do the answer or whatever. Right? Yeah, that's it's where the it's where you'll go to put the answers in the crowd crowd per site. I know it's kind of hard to do a link on a ch in the chat and then type that link on your phone if your your Zoom is not on your phone, yeah. right? So, uh, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll so wait until everyone's ready, for sure. All right. Seven, two. Okay. okay. And qu question in the chat is, once we are in, should our screen look like what is being shown on Zoom? Yes, that is correct. It will say, uh, game will begin shortly. So, how would you put in your, your answer? Okay, so I'm at 26 now, so I'm thinking perhaps Victor got on. Oh, 26. I think I, I got in. Yeah, I think uh, I see. I, I need a nickname. Can I use Fino? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, I'm not playing, so absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. So I think, yeah, I think we've got everybody then. As long as you don't put Phenom's sister because that's already taken. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, y'all. <laughs> All right, so if everybody's set to go, everybody's got their trigger fingers ready. Like I said, there will be a countdown going on. We, we have five minutes for each, but um, if I see that we've gotten everybody's answers in, there should be 27 people, um, then we can go to the next question. So the quicker you buzz in with your answer and register it, the more points you'll get if you're correct. So, and at the end, it's the highest points that win. So um, just keep that in mind as you're looking. Again, all the information, um, if you don't know the answer, the information is going to be in the, the speech that you would have received. The link for that is in the chat as well. So you can reference back and forth. This is an open book quiz. Alrighty. So if without any further ado, we are going to get started. So I am going to press play. Oh. Okay, so are we all seeing question number one? Somebody just give me an audio. Yes. Yep. Yes, yeah. okay. So question number one. In his speech, MLA Moses mentioned the Detroit Blackburn riots of 1833. Which Blackburns does this refer to? A, NASCAR driver James Bunky Blackburn and his wife Nancy. B, Lucy and Thornton Blackburn, a couple who escaped enslavement in Kentucky but were captured in Detroit. C, NFL coach George Blackie Blackburn and his wife Elaine. Or D, mega politician Marsha Blackburn and her husband Chuck. <laughs> Can I give you a shout out there, uh, Rhonda and Nadia? uh sure i had such a fun time yesterday at the manitoba museum oh uh, well thank class. you so much for joining yeah we. we had a really great time um that's a great shout out because thank you to manitoba museum um for hosting it was just an excellent excellent time and thank you everybody that came out i hope you had fun yeah it was it was great to see there was food there was music there was dancers I mean, the kids love the museum always, but then getting a chance to experience it like this is a really, really highlight. Yeah, we were overwhelmed by the amount of participation that <laughs> that happened and, and the number of people that came through the doors for the market, down in the um, planetarium and into the museum. It was fantastic. It was an, a great, great, great evening. Absolutely. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's February 4th, right? And uh, this is this is already my fourth Black History Month event, so we're going. Look at that! You're, you're, yeah. for your BHM Black History Month participation quiz, you are at hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yeah, four days in, and we've already had four events. So I mean, this is has been uh, really fantastic. The energy is is high, and we're we're excited for how the rest of the month is going to go. So I've got 15, 16 answers in. Um, I'm gonna give it, uh, we've got two and a half minutes left. So if you're reading, take a look. The answer is definitely in the reference document. I guess I can go as far to tell you whereabouts, but I think that I'll wait for, for another minute or so to tell you what. Exactly. Yeah, if you give time. We give lots of time, all the time it takes, because it's not like a normal trivia game where Absolutely. you have to answer quick and you give up in frustration and yeah. throw the desk. No, we're here to learn. So you take. We are here to learn. To, yeah. And for those that already answer. got the answer, mm -hmm. I mean, feel free to look over the rest of the the speech so you can kind of prepare yourself. There's tons okay. of information in it, and um, we're we're happy to have been able to get access to the speech and all the information that's in there so it's a reference that you all can can use and, and keep as you as you see fit yeah just if you're going to reference it just make sure that you give jamie his credit <laughs> the are these are his words and, and he, he's put it together so eloquently so we're really thankful for that so let's see where we've got yet yeah, 17 in one minute and 20 seconds remaining Mm -hmm. All right. If anybody happens to be 
on while well, we've got a minute left. Um, if anybody wanted to give a quick shout out for an event that they're going to be doing this month, feel free. You've got 55 seconds. Unmute yourself and, and tell us what you got going. Or if you know of an, uh, somebody who's going to be doing an event, an event that you're going to be attending, that's not necessarily one that's put on by Black History Manitoba, you've got an audience to be able to share that information too with 35 seconds. Hi Hi guys. Hello. Hi, it's Donna from the Afro-Caribbean Association. Hi there. Hi, so I just want to um, thank you. I just wanted to um, promote our Black History Month movie night, which will be held on uh, Saturday, February 18th at 259 Watt Street. It's a free event, all are welcome. And also on um, Sunday, February the 26th, we're hosting a, um, a poetry slam at 2 p.m. And I should also let you know that movie night is at 6 p.m. So our poetry okay. slams at 2 p.m. All are welcome. Um, it should be a fun time. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. And so our time is up. And let's show you the correct answer. Correct answer is dun, 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 B. Dun, 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 B. Lucy and Thornton Blackburn, a couple who escaped enslavement in Kentucky, but were captured in Detroit. There you go. I think most of you, most of most of you got it, but we're not going to show where everybody is in the in in the pack. We'll we'll wait a little bit so that you can see where you about to you are. So next question. Question number two. How did things turn out for Lucy and or Thornton? A, two brave women visited Lucy in her cell for prayer. One swapped clothing with Lucy, taking her place, and the other snuck Lucy out of jail. Then she was spirited away to Canada. B, they were taken back to Kentucky by steamer. C, the Black community in Detroit stormed the jail to free Mr. Blackburn. Or D, Thornton narrowly escaped pursuers crossing the Detroit River into Canada. And I will just let you know that for this one, there is more than one answer. That is not, we don't have copywritten license to be <laughs> Jeopardy. Oh, so should I change it up? A little yeah, bit. You have to do like the phenom remix or something oh. because you can't you can't go right out to do it. <laughs> they can't recognize it when they do the video. Thank you, Daddy. We don't want you to pull in our video. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm watching Michael's back. I got him. <laughs> oh, that is fair. No, I I really appreciate that. Because we do not want any fines this yeah. evening. <laughs> oh, I feel like the. I feel like the Jeopardy theme should be in the con the public domain by now. Like, it should be, right? <laughs> if it isn't, I'm, I'm sure like that little, that one note off, we can we can probably slip it by. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, since you love doing all this extra work, I mean, if you want an extra project, I mean, that could be something. That you, can do. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I really, I have to say, I mean, Jamie is from my area, St. Mattel, so I'm, I'm always extra proud to share the work that Jamie does. And I mean, this, this forum and this platform is not political in nature whatsoever, but I mean, we have to definitely acknowledge when good work is being done by, by whomever. And I mean, we always try to share all the great successes we have in our community and you are one of them, Jamie, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's. Oh, it's really great. I mean, there's so many successes, like you said, to share up, celebrate in our community. And so just glad to be a little bit part of that. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, there's so many great things happening, right? Whether it's a movie night, whether it's uh, putting on an event in a museum, it's awesome to see. But I got to go back to, to Donna. Sorry, I don't want to take time off of your thinking there, but you kept us in suspense. You said there's a movie night, Donna, but you didn't tell us what movie is going to be playing. Donna, can we get some yes, more? Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, my bad. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so we're showing um, Woman King. I've seen the previews. I've heard um, good things about it. So I'm so excited to um, 
be part of uh, this uh, event and seeing Woman King. Um, it's gonna be a fun night. Um, I probably will come in my PJs um, and be as comfortable as possible. So, oh, good to know that that's yeah, acceptable. I, awesome. <laughs> I hope to see a lot of people out, and um, yeah, it should be a great time. And it's a great opportunity for us to showcase one of our community organizations and the building that we've had for many, many years. And because I'm always surprised because some people haven't been to Ackham on Watt Street. So it's a great opportunity to get people in the board, into the doors and, and let them see what, what we have within our community. I think that that's yes. a great way to do it. And why not have a movie with popcorn and pajamas? To exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks guys. No problem. So we're at 56 seconds and then this is now worth 18 points. Oh, 17 points. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it on your end, but the, the point value declines as the seconds tick down. So like I said, the quicker you answer, but again, it's not a race and because you also want to get it right. Because if you get it wrong, unfortunately you get zero points. So uh, just take your time looking through. Like I said, this question happens to have uh, more than one answer. So um, we'll see how everybody's doing. And I think. Uh, so how come we can't put two answers in? We can only put one. You can only put one. So you get full points for one. one you just pick any one. <laughs> yeah, pick one of the correct ones. <laughs> And the sooner you pick, the more points, points you get. We're not being able to pick all one, uh, two. Or three. Can't change. No, it's too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just don't pick a wrong answer. That's all. That's all. Well, so, thing might be right. If you had D to be all of the above, that yeah. would help, you know. But but you don't have that option. Fair, right? <laughs> but perhaps it isn't all of the above. Just give us the answer. Can I be suspense there? That's, that's, that's okay, just suspense. So for me. Let's see what the correct answer or answers is. Dun, 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 dun. A, C, and D. So if you picked any of those, you've got some points coming your way. All righty. Okay. So on to question number three. What key piece of emancipation legislation received royal assent on August 28, 1833? A, the Emancipation Proclamation, B, the Slavery Ab Abolition Act, C, the Brussels Conference Act, or D, Bill 232, the Emancipation Day Act? I just wanted to add in there, Rhonda. Yeah. About the uh, the story of uh, the, the Black Prince and their mm -hmm. move from from Detroit across to Windsor, right? Right. A couple. I was just going to add in a couple interesting things. Is that that story of how they they moved to Windsor, and the governor, the general, the uh, governor general at the time in uh, in Ontario, didn't allow them to be uh, extradited back to America, and the, some of the basis for that was. The fact that they were charged with stealing property, which was themselves, right? So since they were <laughs> slaves and they were their, they were considered property, the crime was that they stole themselves. And so the part of his decision was was ruling and saying that you cannot steal yourself, you know. So it's pretty interesting the fact that, you know it came to that point where they were charged with stealing themselves. And, you know, in Canada here, we decided that we weren't going to send them back. And then the second part that's interesting is that, that the, uh, that they decided the part of their basis for a decision to see, deciding to keep them in Canada was because they knew that they would be turned back into slavery. And so they said, does the punishment fit the crime? Does a lifetime of slavery fit the crime of stealing anything? You know, even if it is yourself, even if you think that you can steal yourself, does that punishment of lifelong slavery meet justify the crime of stealing a property? And so that was part of it as well. And, you know, part of that, uh, even that extends to some of the uh, extradition uh, rules and laws that are in place today goes back to that decision about looking at whether 
that what kind of punishment the person will face when they go back to that country that they're going to be sent to, and whether whether that punishment is uh, is you know would be justified based on the crime that they're accused of. So some of those principles that were decided in this uh, Blackburn case are uh, uh, you know some of the principles that decide uh, cases uh, even today when people are potentially going to get extradited uh, out of Canada. So it's really interesting, really impactful case. Uh, this one here. That's in, un, unbelievable that they would take the term property to the extent of putting it on an individual and that their property to somebody else before their property in and of themselves, like to themselves. So that's mm -hmm. very, wow, that's kind of bizarre when you think about it in, in today's terminology. Like you wouldn't think that that would be something that they would be able to hold you to. Yes, exactly. I was just going to suggest that you were thinking into, like you said, today's terminology, yeah, but back, sure. then, yeah. back, back then, then you know, exactly. we were property. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's wow. hard. I mean, there are still places to, in the world today that still have that same mentality, but wow. I mean, to think that it was happening within the worlds that you and I live in to today, that that's kind of surreal. Yeah. It seems as though that punishment would probably uh, more aptly applied to Boxcar Brown. There you go. Are you familiar with Boxcar Brown? Well, tell us, a, tell the crowd about it. You've got a, a minute Bo and eight seconds. Give us a... Yeah. Boxcar, Boxcar Brown mailed himself to himself in a different location. He got into a box and um, got a friend to mail it, and he was inside the box. Wow. So it's, that's why he was known as Boxcar Brown. Okay, look at that. <laughs> wow, history. Yeah. Are you asking more questions about the Blackburns as part of the trivia? I hope not. No, we are not. Good. Because the, I believe it's the oldest existing church in Toronto now was built by the Blackburns. Oh, look, there you go. Mm, okay. And they started a taxi service, a very successful taxi service. Huh. In Toronto, after they came back, so they had yeah, a taxi service. I think, it was, I think oh, it was yes. the I think it was the Trinity Anglican Church. I think you're referring to. It could be. I don't remember what it is, but I believe it is the the oldest existing church in Toronto now. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, that's some information that we can take a look for. Absolutely. We'll try to see if we can add some links into the, the chat before we head out. So for where you can get some more information. So let's take a look at the correct answer for this question. Correct answer being B, the Slavery Abolition Act. And I'll just let you know that actually all these choices are real legislation, but only but the only one that matches the date and time is B, the Slavery Abolition Act. So the Emancipation Proclamation was Lincoln's, Bill 232 was Moses, and um, the Brussels Conference Act wasn't about emancipation, but a limit on trade. So look, you even got into the quiz in, in another way, Jamie. <laughs> we put you in in another way. So um, individuals, yeah, might have thought that it was the Emancipation Day Act, um, Bill 232. Uh, but if you look at the dates that we gave, that's where it received royal assent. So it was a little bit of a trick question, a little bit. <laughs> so question number four, we're moving right along. What union did Black Manitoban John Arthur Robinson start? And your answers are, your multiple choice answers possibly, A, the International Association of Railway Employees, B, the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, C, the Colored Train Men of America, or D, the Order of Sleeping Car Porters? Well, everybody is getting their answer on that one. I'm going to just remind everybody that we do have an event coming up on Sunday. That would be the... Oh, I don't have a calendar right in front of me, but next Sunday. Oh, the date is Sunday, oh. February 12th. Thank you very much. <laughs> February 12th. Um, we partner every year with the Jamaican Association of Manitoba, and they will be having their 
luncheon. Um, again, this is the year where we will be doing multitudes. So it's either you can take it out and we can bring it to the curbside or you can eat in with everybody and join the association as we celebrate Black History Month together. So those tickets are $15. They are available online. Um, if you go to the Jamaican Association website, you'll be able to purchase them under the event calendar. Um, you can always give Miss Mavis a phone call. She can help you out getting tickets there, or you can e-transfer your funds to uh, the Jamaican Association. Again, all of that information is on our website, bhmwinnipeg.com, or you can send a message to bhm winnipeg at gmail.com and we can make sure that information gets to you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, that was a, um, we, during the pandemic, obviously we had to pivot from a in-person event that we had been having for years um, to a drive up style. And people really liked that idea. And especially since that day is the Super Bowl. So now you you don't even have to cook for that. So <laughs> come grab your food, take it home, buy a bunch of food, bring it home, take it out of the containers, put it in a pot. And when you have people coming over to watch the game, pretend yes. that you made the food. <laughs> yeah, the association thought of that too. So we're there from 1.30 until 4.30. So you'll be right in time for the game, grab your lunch, go home and get comfortable. Exactly. So it's definitely got you covered. So you're thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to entertain and be able to support the community at the same time? This is a perfect, perfect case scenario. Um, Ms. Mavis, did you want to say anything else in regards to the lunch? Um, they can also watch the Super Bowl there at Jam Hall because we, we have the, um, the, the, the cable back on. Okay. So they can even watch oh. it while they're watching and they can buy more food if they get hungry and of course the bar is there so <laughs> have a good time there I, I i knew you would add more to it so that's why i wanted to give you the I, opportunity <laughs> I, I will entertain them too you know and serve them and you know i'll do everything to make their day uh, worthwhile you know and enjoyable wow. if that's not a good plug then i don't know what would be now we're now we're sidetracked because now we're all hungry because <laughs> <talking about this. laughs> sorry about that but okay, it's okay we've got one minute left just shy of and 18 points still available on the board. Hmm. have you answered yet nadia i have answered yet <laughs> oh, okay. Back to the speech then. Uh, quick question for Nadia. If, if you've answered the question, if you could check your Zoom chat, there's something, uh, something, something in there that's timely. Thanks. Yeah, so we've got the, the answers are, are spread on this one. I'll, I will tell you that. So it's not a unanimous decision, <laughs> but there's only one answer. So we will see momentarily. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is dun, 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 the order of sleeping car porters. So those of you that might have um, seen the CV series, C yeah, TV series that was on CBC earlier in 2022. Um, they had it all circled around the story of the creation of the union for the, um, the order of sleeping car porters. So um, some of you on the call might have even been involved in that production. So uh, it was uh, it was an honor to have that production come here to Winnipeg, um, and and for all those that they had hired. Uh, a lot of black actors, um, a lot of um, black technical staff, and and it was just really great for them to see that they um, they loved, they fell in love with the community here in Winnipeg. So our our hopes are that they will come back for a season two. So we're looking out for that information to be coming shortly. 
Okay, so um, does anybody want to see the, the leaderboard? Let's see where everybody is at. No. Can we see it? How close is the race? Dun, 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 dun. In the that lead. Yeah, that is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. So it's it's anybody's game. I will just continue to say that. It is anyone's game. So that's awesome. So let's let's keep it moving. All righty. So let's go to the next question. Question number five. What aspects of Billy Beal's life did MLA Moses highlight in his speech? You can choose any correct answer. A, Mr. Beal was one of the first black people to move to the Swan River region. Mr. Beal was an avid photographer and spent years documenting the people, events and activities of his community. C, Mr. Beal joined the school board in 1912 and served for 37 years or D, Mr. Beal was a steam engineer whose salary afforded him the opportunity to pursue multiple interests, including science, law, astronomy, philosophy, carpentry, electronics, and dressmaking. What was A again? A, Mr. Beal was one of the first black people to move to the Swan River region. Exciting. So this this question centers right around Manitoba. It's or so it seems. I'm not actually able to find anything here with like how you put an answer in. <laughs> From I guess I'm a, I really am a Luddite. So I'll just listen and then. <laughs> Throw in an occasional comment. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that you're trying to click on the correct answer on your on the screen. Are you logged into the CrowdPure app? No, I guess not. Oh, okay, I'm, you're just I'm watching. just on oh, Zoom. Oh, okay, which is which is fine. Yeah, you can follow along with the quiz. You just can't select the answers through here. It's actually we're we're showing you. Um, there's a, a different app that the, uh, the trivia is actually live in. So if you oh, see at the very okay. bottom, it says to play along, you go to crowd.live and then you enter in the code BNI72 and then you can join in the game that way. So if you open up an, another browser on your phone and then you just go crowd.live and then it'll ask you for a code, you're gonna enter BNI72 and it'll bring you into the game. Okay. And there's yeah, still people think you, I mean, you can still catch up. <laughs> yep. And that link is in the chat too, if that's helpful. There you go. Yes. And there's a link in the chat too. So Rhonda, we just had the question about the sleeping car porters and the show. Do you want to talk about your connection? Yeah. Well, I mean, so for those that, of you that don't know, my son, Jerron Wilson, um, he actually played one of the characters in the TV series. He played um, the son of the lead porter. Um, he was Teddy Massey. So he was the son of Junior and Marlene Massey in the TV series. So again, there's another reason, I mean, a selfish reason for us to want a season two, but um, it was a very well thought out and well put together TV series. Um, the series also went down to um, BET in the States and it did, it had an amazing run there. It was also nominated for an Emmy, I believe, um, for uh, its oh, choreography. It? Pardon me? I said it was great. Yes, yeah, it was, it was it, incredible. So um, it's, it's really beautiful to see um, they found a creative way to bring the history to life mm -hmm. in a 
educational and entertaining way. And I think that the, the writers were very thoughtful. Anybody that was working on the set knew that they were, they were very mindful of some of the content and how it could affect the individuals that were involved in the production. And they actually set up safe spaces for the actors and um, the, everybody from the set crew, everybody um, was able to have an opportunity to um, discuss some of the themes that came up within the, the um, programming and to ensure that everybody felt supported. And they had, um, I know that it's important to me was that they had uh, a crew of their hair and makeup stylists, those that were specialized in black hair and black makeup. So um, they knew what they were doing with, and they knew how to handle us and, and all that we come with. And <laughs> we felt like we can come with our true and authentic self. So right down to costume and everything involved, it was, it was very well thought out and, and, and well planned and executed. So I, I was very appreciative to see that side of the, the production. So let's hope for a season two. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the correct answer for uh, question number five is, or answers, a, Mr. Billy Beal was one of the first Black people to move to Swan River region. And also, C, Mr. Beal joined the school board in 1912 and served for 37 years. So a number of you got that right. Uh, so we will move along to question six. Let's see where we go now. So question six, who took people who arrived in Windsor via the Underground Railroad into their homes. So who took people who'd arrived in Windsor via the Underground Railroad into their homes? A, Thornton and Lucy Blackburn. B, Mary and Henry Bibb. C, John and Lucy Robinson. Or D, Devon and Perlene Clunis. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh. <laughs> I know which one it's not. <laughs> number, number four, number D is funny. Mm. Well, Moses, can I ask you a question about question five while we talk about question six? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, when I was reading your speech, I, I picked two, two things uh, that was, were interesting about the, about the bibs. And as I was uh, Googling, I learned so much more about them. So all those answers are correct. That's why I had to specify, pick the ones from the speech. Uh, such an interesting person, and I know a lot of stuff was left Lisa? on the cutting room floor because you Lisa? had a, not a lot of time to give your speech. Like, how did you decide what to pick, and um, was it like that for every Black history um, story you highlighted? Yeah, a great question, Mike. Yeah, it was, <clears throat> you kind of had to parse down a little bit because the history is so rich, right? There's so many details that you want to throw in there about people's lives, about their contributions, about things that, you know, uh, impacted others or the community. So it's kind of like just whittling it down. And I tried to fit it into themes uh, that we were that we were talking about. And for him, I, I you know, for, um, for Billy Beal, I wanted to mention his uh, aspect about being a school on the school board because of education, right? Because education is so important particularly in the Black history and particularly against, you know, fighting against uh, the prejudice that they would have faced at the time. And it did link in with other uh, parts of the speech as well around education, uh, around, around some other, other parts. So we wanted to kind of, I wanted to make sure that theme was extended through the story of, uh, of telling it more locally here in Manitoba uh, with Billy Beal. Awesome. Yes. Did did that answer answer your yes question it did and thank you for uh, graciously correcting the name too <laughs> <laughs> we're here to learn and we're here to learn together from each other absolutely so, yeah. absolutely that's what that's what this platform is for and and thank you Jamie for providing some insight into how you were able to do the research that you did and and identify what what poignant points that you wanted to to bring forth so i that that's much appreciated um, because you did you did cover a lot of different themes within that all fell under the overarching emancipation and um, we wanted to definitely I can tell that you were trying to reflect as much as you can on the different parts of Canada as well I think that I I 
I mean, were you, were you, was that something that you did purposefully within yeah. your speech? Yeah, I mean, you, you wanted to also reflect, you know, in terms of Manitoba's context to the whole story. Uh, but also, you know, the story, you can't deny that the story, a lot of the story extends from Southern Ontario and Windsor and, you know, the, the events that took place there with the Underground Railroad. Uh, but at the same time, you want to show that connection there. The same struggle that they went to, the experiences they went to, people had them here in the prairies. People had them here in Manitoba. And uh, and so the victories that we, you know, uh, we, we experienced because of the Emancipation uh, Day, it was experienced across the whole country. Everyone shared in that. Everyone worked for it. Everyone shared shared in it. And so we want to share those stories and make sure that history is known from uh, different experiences across the country. That's awesome. I uh, I just wanted to point out that we've got fifty seconds left. Sixteen points still available for individuals, and I'll give you a hint. So if you haven't answered yet, don't answer deep. <laughs> So now I've already, I've given you, I've, I've increased your odds immensely. So now you can pick between three that are left, Thornton and Lucy Blackburn, Mary and Henry Bibb, or John and Lucy Robinson. How can okay. I change my answer? <laughs> well, I know you didn't pick Devon and Perlene, because I wouldn't have said that if I thought somebody had selected it. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I had already done that, so. You had? No, because I would have <laughs> Seen that? <laughs> I assure you that you didn't. <laughs> Does anybody know who Devon and Perlene Clunis is? Yeah. Uh, anybody don't know? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Well, I just there might be somebody on the call that doesn't know. So somebody that does know, definitely share. So Miss Mavis, yeah, let them know who uh, Mr. Devon Clunis is. Well. He was our first black chief of police, wasn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure if if individuals and Perlene is his beautiful wife. Yeah. So if you if you didn't recognize the names when they came up there, yeah, that's who that's who they are. He made yeah. history. Yeah. Not just the first police black police chief in Winnipeg, but in the country. There you go. Uh, I understand, yeah. Yes, exactly. So history made. Awesome, and we are down to zero with zero points left on the board. So the answer is da -da -da -da, Mary and Henry Bibb. So I will let you know that out of the 20 votes that we got in, 55% of you had selected the correct answer for this one. So you know what we'll do? We'll take a look at the ranking leaderboard because I think it's, it's getting close and we're getting down to the wire. Let's take a look and see. Okay, so Dion is, is interesting. Oh my goodness, if you can see the margin between the first five, it's mere individual single points. And so it's it's truly anyone's game here. So yes, and and it'll nobody's ever out of this game. So please continue to continue to, to answer your questions here. Okay, let's keep it going because now it's getting excited. Very exciting. Question seven of nine is, in addition to Mary Bibb's abolitionist work, she also had a passion for education. Which expressions of this passion does MLA Moses highlight here in his speech? She was one of the first black women teachers in North America. B, she developed elementary and secondary curriculum for English, math, and science. C, she tutored the folks whose underground railway journeys brought them to the Bibbs family home. Or D, she opened a school for Black children who were not allowed to attend public schools. And for this one too, there is more than one. So choose either one. Okay, yeah, I see. Oh, answers came in fast on this one. Okay, all right, the individuals. There you go, looking good so far. As we are still going with our trivia night, I hope everybody's having a great time. Um, we do also have a youth event this year, so we are very happy to partner with our host, 
um, the Afro-Caribbean Association of Manitoba. They are going to be hosting our Youth Debate and Research Challenge. That happens on Saturday the 18th. Um, ACM is full of events for that day. So if you come earlier in the day, you can just bring all your pajamas and stay for the evening to uh, do, enjoy that movie night. <laughs> so, so we start at, we start there at 11 o'clock. Um, our young people have developed a wonderful event. We are doing the debate as well as a research challenge. This is a fun interactive day. Um, we want to thank our sponsor for that event for the lunch is um, Minister Audrey Gordon. So you'll come and get educated um, and be fed in your, your mind and your stomach. So we um, want everybody to come out to that event as well. More information on that event is on our website, but you can, it's free again. That's a theme here for this month. It's as many, though we can do for free as possible. So come out and enjoy that event um, on the 18th of February. I think we will give them time to go home if they want to go home and change in between, right, Nadia? No, Donna said they can stay. No, they can just stay. <laughs> Nadia will entertain you for the four hours or so before in between the two. Well, I gotta run out to the basketball because um, no, on, the, no, 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 no. on the 17th and 18th, um, we are hosting the CTC basketball, a black tribute. So um, on the evening of the 17th, if you wanna go down to MBCI, they are having, that's uh, the location on River 10, 218 River 10. Um, there we're gonna be hosting, uh, sorry, sponsoring the basketball game there. And then on the 17th, I'm going to slip out and go over to the game, uh, say hello to the people there, and then come back <laughs> for the movie night. So, on the so 18th, it's a full day. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it's a Friday, Saturday event over there um, that CPC basketball is presenting, correct? Awesome. Okay, we got a minute and a half. Does anybody have any any interesting Black history facts that they wanted to share kind of along what we've been talking about, Canadian Black history this evening? We've got a minute and 17 seconds to share. Just unmute yourself and give us a fun fact. Nobody? I've got shy. I, I, I have something about the Woman King movie. OK. Um, there's a Smithsonian article about the women that were in that, like the women who were part of the military regiment from Dahomey, and apparently a bunch of them went to, after the battle that, that they show in the film, guess where some of the women went? Where? They went to Martinique. to fight they went to they moved to martinique apparently oh some of the women that were actually part of the actual regiment that the movie is about that the, the movie is based on uh -oh. were you able to hear at all why martinique i'm now i'm i'm intrigued well it was in a smithsonian article and there was a battle and um, in something like 1896 and it follows up with where some of the women went afterwards. Okay. And the last woman who actually fought in that battle died in something like 1979. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. That is interesting. That might have to be my homework before the movie night to <laughs> identify where they went and why. Because I'm I'm more curious about the why. I always I always am curious about how individuals end up where they end up and and what brings them there. So that's I'm gonna use that as my homework. Yeah, and then Smithsonian article. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Okay, I've written it down as my homework. So I am going to show you the correct answer for number seven being, oh, and there's two. So um, A, she was one of the first black women teachers in North America is correct, as well as D, she opened a school for black children who were not allowed to attend public schools. 
So there we go. Let's take a look as we're getting closer. Let's take a look at our leaderboard again. See if it's switched. No, oh, but it's still two points in between. <laughs> and then we've got like 13 points in between second and third. Okay. Ooh. Wow, so close. That is so close. I don't know that I've seen it so close before, especially as we get down to the end. Okay, so, all right. So these last couple questions are gonna be very, very important. But like I said, there's still time. So please just try and get your answer in as quick as possible and you, and you can move up on the leaderboard here. Next question, number eight of nine. Mary and Henry Bibb started the first major newspaper targeted at Black Canadians. What did they name it? A, the Winnipeg Defender, B, Freedom's Journal, C, Voice of the Fugitive, or D, the Canadian Observer? Get your answers in fast, fast, fast. Infos in the speech. I am so excited. The Winnipeg Defender, Freedom's Journal, Voice of the Fugitive, or the Canadian Observer? First major newspaper targeted at Black Canadians. Okay, yeah, we've got a number of the votes already in. While we're waiting, as we always do, it's probably been all, close to 40 years that they've been doing the history lesson every year during Black History Month. So I wanna make another plug on Louis Real Day to join us at the Jamaican Association of Manitoba at, um, uh, I think they're starting at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, somewhere around there. We're going to be having our history lesson and Service Canada Forum. Um, we always kind of do a little bit of a, a bounce between stuff for the family and stuff for our adults. So the Service Canada, um, they want to let us know about all the different services that they have for our community, especially so immigration services and uh, different projects and, and learning tools and employment tools that we they have out there. So they'll be making a special presentation. Um, again, this is another free event, free for the whole family. There'll be some arts and crafts and food and music and just learning about history in various different ways. So I ask that you come out and join us. Um, that's February 20th at 11 a.m. I'm gonna go with 11 a.m. <laughs> Uh, we're there until we can't be there anymore until they kick us out. So come down, bring the family, enjoy the Louis Real Day holiday with Black History Manitoba. Yes. And that's, like you said, it's, we try to target the programming for all ages so that you don't necessarily have to drop off your kids and leave. We've got stuff for the adults as well. So we'll switch up the, the presenters. We'll have different stations set up and we'll have Service Canada. They'll provide some information, um, perhaps bring your phones or and or laptops and maybe we can um, get them to show you where the job banks are, et cetera. And maybe they be, might be able to. So if anybody is looking for a job, um, Service Canada is definitely great for that. Um, information on ROEs and, and anything employment related, um, they would be a great resource and you'll be able to speak to somebody in person. They'll be, they'll be there to do the presentation. So um, we like to do a cooking aspect as well. So oftentimes we'll get people to participate in making the meal that we're going to share that day. So that's a wonderful um, part of that event as well. And then we'll do some music, arts and crafts, um, Ms. Mavis, did you want to chit chat about anything exciting that you have on tap for this year's history lesson as our leader for that committee? Ms. Or Mavis is focused. She's very focused oh, while she's doing that. Yeah. That's, a great, that's a great segue to our, we also have cooking classes that are back again this year. Um, we're very honored to have Chef Rob come out with us and do that. Right now we've got um, our virtual cooking class will be on February 16th. And then on the 23rd, we are going to have a cooking class in person. Um, we're just confirming some details, but just note that on your calendar that as soon as we get the registration open, um, it'll be up 
course, limited seating, but come out, join us. We're going to do a cooking class live and, and talk about some the way that we connect through food um, within our community and our history about food. So check that out on the website, bhmwinnipeg.com. We'll keep you posted as we get closer to that date. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, 21 seconds remaining, and we've got a couple answers left to, or a couple of participants left to answer. So you're, you're not out of this yet. So you've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer for this one is dun, 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 dun. C, the voice of the fugitive. So 15 of you got that one right. So let's see, depending on how quickly you got that right, let's see where we are in our leaderboard. And I am looking at the time, we're just at eight minutes after eight. So I hope you'll indulge us for a few more minutes here. Still the two points in between first and second. <laughs> and the 13 points still between second and third. And then 16 points between third and fourth. Oh, we actually have a tie for fourth. So at, oh my goodness. So, okay. So we are at the lightning round. This one is worth a whole whack of points. So the faster you get this in, the you can jump from the bottom to the top in easily, very easily. So I want you to just have your hands on the trigger. Um, the, this question is not in the speech. So now we're just going based on information that's been shared this evening. So everybody has the opportunity to get this one right. It's going to come down to who's able to click the answer quickest. Okay. So don't wait for me to read out all the answers. If you've got the answer before I go through them all, definitely, definitely, definitely click it and, and register it and lock it in. Okay. So are we all ready? Thumbs up. Okay. We are going to go to question nine, lightning round. So now you only got 30 seconds because this is something that's supposed to be super, super easy. Okay. Number nine question is, if you don't want to cook on Sunday, February 12th, Super Bowl Sunday, what's your best option for lunch? The Black History Month drive through luncheon at the Jamaican Association, 1098 Winnipeg Avenue, McDonald's, Leftovers or 7-Eleven hot dogs? Dun, 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 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the answer, do I even have to show the correct answer? I will, but this, this should have been a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> the Black History Manitoba drive through luncheon at Jamaican Association, 1098 Winnipeg Avenue. You can get your tickets online. And let's see how our leaderboard ended up. Are we ready? <laughs> and we have, oh my goodness. Wow. Michelle and Dylan came back up to the top. Wow. 1469. Dion, second place, 1428. So those are our winners and runner up. Congratulations to our first place, Rochelle and Dylan. You will get two tickets to see the Winnipeg Jets versus the LA Kings on February 28th at Canada Life Center. And Dion, you will be joining them. You will have the third ticket to that game. We will have, um, we'll be rolling out some information as to how that game is going to look but we're really excited. There's gonna be um, special tickets that are gonna come out and packages through True North and the Winnipeg Jets organization. So congratulations to our winners. Congratulations to everybody because I hope that you had a good time learning some information and sharing amongst each other. Um, we're really, like I said, excited about the month that we have coming up and um, a lot of planning has gone into having as much variety with the different ways that we can share the information, some of it traditional and some of it not so traditional. So I hope that people are, are open-minded to how we are trying to present the information in fun and creative ways. So this is one of them. Thank you so much to Non-Trivial Trivia for putting together the, the, 
the quiz and training me on how to do this background <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the time you took to be able to do that. Oh. So thank you very, well, you're very, very much. welcome. Yeah. Yes. You're very, yes. very welcome. Yeah. Uh, just a quick note, uh, I just want to thank uh, Black History Manitoba for coming alongside us and uh, helping, helping us out uh, and sponsoring us and uh, Manco Control Systems who uh, offered us the tickets. So um, Rochelle and Dylan, um, if uh, one of you could uh, get in touch with me by email, you all got an email from me today and uh, Dean as well. And let me know the email address that you use to log into Ticketmaster is the one we need so we can get, get those uh, Jets tickets to you. And okay. if um, you got the link, uh, not through Eventbrite, make sure you connect with uh, uh, Nadia or uh, Rhonda and make, make sure we uh, find out how to find you so you get to go to the game, okay? For sure. And a special shout out to Carrie. Carrie was out by one point, <laughs> one point. And, and I assure you that nobody saw the quizzes beforehand. It was in the safe hands of Mike and I and Jamie were the only three. Nobody else even on the committee even got to see it. <laughs> we kept it under lock and key, not gentlemen. Definitely so. left out, definitely yeah. left out. Took Nadia, yeah. right, everybody yeah. was right in the conversation. They made sure they kicked me out. Yes. We uh, this has been great, me. it's been so much fun. Thank you so much to Non-Trivial Trivia. Um, just before everybody heads off, uh, we will keep it open for as long, I don't know, how busy Jamie is. He's got his coffee. Here, so I'm guessing he's <laughs> getting some more energy just in case. So, but before, for those of you who don't have to run away really, really quickly, I'm sure that Michael um, from Non-Trivial will have, um, if you have any questions or anything that you want to chat with him, he'll be able to stick around. And same with Jamie, hopefully you'll be able to answer a couple more questions. But just to close off for those who have to leave, uh, thank you so much to Non-Trivial Trivia. Um, they're perform they do their stuff all throughout the year and they've got all different platforms so please check them out the information is there so thank you Carrie and and the rest of the team so much for getting that done thank you Jamie Moses for participating with us today thank it's just it's so great to have you alongside of us having fun with us so thank you so much for that um, and thank you to our host Rhonda it's been a great time you did an excellent job uh, it's been lots of fun so thank you all very, very much. Just to close off for our, um, our month activities, I just wanna put a quick plug in also for our closing ceremonies. That'll be happening on the 25th of February. We are happy to be holding it this year at the Winnipeg Art Gallery at 300 Memorial Boulevard. Reception begins at 6 p.m. and the event starts at seven. Please get your tickets online. Um, they are $50 each. Our guest speaker for this event is Councillor Marcus Chambers. So we are very excited. It's gonna be a beautiful night. Come dress to impress. It's gonna be really, really fantastic. So please, if you're able to come out to that. And then on March 4th, we're all, see we're always, every year we're creeping a little bit more into the, <laughs> into the new year and into the new month. So March 4th will be our annual community gospel concert. This, if you have not been to one yet, I, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Um, and because we're moving it into March, we wanna make sure that you're there. So this year that event is for free. So come out, join us. It is a wonderful, wonderful event. We are going to be at New Beginnings Church, which is on De uh, St. Mary's Avenue. Again, all the information is on the website you can, our doors open for that event at six o'clock and we start at 6.30. So there's a lot going on. We have a lot of friends in, in, in our community that are from different um, organizations that are gonna be putting on events. The Royal MTC has an event, the, a play that will be going on from February 15th to March 11th. Um, I know there's a Valentine's banquet from Miss Kenny Dowdu and also Truth and Life Worship Center. The WAG is putting on some events during the month and the University of Manitoba is, there's lots of stuff. So anything that you're looking for, please check out the website. We're trying to put as many um, events on there as possible. Um, the Afro-Caribbean Association already mentioned earlier. So please, please, please go to the website and get that information. Have a fantastic, fantastic night. And thank you all for joining us so much. I think I caught everything. Did I get everything? Uh, Manitoba Museum has their virtual events. Did you take those yeah. um, this coming yeah. Wednesday? 
and then two weeks as well, you can log on to their website to get that information. So they were fantastic to work with and partner with for First Fridays, and they're going to have some virtual history lessons as well. So you can log in, um, register for those as well. And those are really great. Great. And for those who did not win tonight, you still have an opportunity to get those Jets tickets. The game is on the 28th. Go to their website. Um, we don't have information on our website yet, but I believe that they do have on theirs. So go to True North or Winnipeg Jets, Google them, however you get that information, um, and you get more um, ticket information on how to purchase tickets for that game. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. And if you see me out and about, make sure that you get your uh, installment of this year's Black History Month calendar. I'll have some to give away. Uh, I've only got, we, we got rid of a few hundred yesterday, so we've got uh, a few more. So if you see me, uh, I'm sure I'll have some in my purse. <laughs> so grab me, ask me if you can get one of those and we'll, we'll try to get as many of these out into the hands of our community members, okay? Mike, Jamie, Carrie, I've got your, I've got yours set aside, okay? So just, okay. I'll, I'll make sure I get yours out to you. <laughs> right. And anybody else who wants them, just come and find me. I'll be at all the Black History Month events, okay? Thanks everyone for your time this evening. Go out and enjoy, share the information that you received today and um, enlighten somebody else about Black history yeah. here in Canada. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good you night. for being a great host today, Rhonda. Thank you. Oh, Rhonda. you're very welcome. This was great. <laughs> awesome. Good to be after nice. party crowd. <laughs> yeah. I can put the music back on. Yeah. Okay. Nadia, can we kill the <laughs> screen share so we can see each other? Um, sure. How do I yeah. get in here? And our, our faces are going to get bigger. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. We're going to grow. Yeah, we're about to grow. <laughs> Just like our brains grew tonight. <laughs> yeah, so we can see everyone. So if you, it should, you should have the option to um, stop sharing. Oh, you know what? I can probably stop you. There, oh, there we go. There. I stopped you. <laughs> <laughs> like, feel free to unmute yourself and say hi to everyone that's on the call. Or do your little shout out before you go. If you've got an event <laughs> to mention this evening, definitely let everyone know on the call before we head on out. I want to give a shout out to Blinken. Oh, <laughs> was very well behaved today during yeah, the call. <laughs> It doesn't look being held. I, I, yeah. I, oh, okay. I Most cats will one, walk right across the screen as yeah. you're on a Zoom. <laughs> the tail go across. Well, I would like I to just. Think, I, would I like don't to think go. I've ever been on a Zoom meeting where a cat didn't appear. Right. <laughs> <That's laughs> so oh, I know. I, I assure you, I've seen it all the time. You just or see some it. pet. Yeah. It's not even just cats. It's just always a pet somewhere yeah. <laughs> comes crawling yeah, across. Right. <laughs> I'd like to file a complaint because I got kicked out for some reason and I had to go back in. So my first answer went way down like 200 points because it kicked me out, so. Oh no. Oh, did, you, did, you, did you participate in the quiz to Nadia? Yes, ma'am, I did. Did you? Oh, I, I did it, but, but just on paper, I didn't. didn't do oh, how did you do? I probably, I probably would have beaten Rochelle. <laughs> I hope you heard that, Rochelle and Dylan. <laughs> they're, 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 they're celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. They, they took off. They didn't want to have to answer any questions. Good for them. Good for them. I'm glad they want to do it in person one day soon. See, that would, you know, just have good old pen and paper. And, and yeah. Thank you. I think next to this <laughs> One of these, one of these times will definitely go. I think we're gonna, we're gonna um, check out CECOM to do that because they want okay. to figure out how to get involved. So sometime, either in the summer or sometime soon, we'll be able to do something with them. So Fantastic. Fantastic. Prepare yourself. We'll be back in person yeah. very soon. Awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. When, they, when they celebrate that Caribbean month, they could probably do something. Yeah, like something that. like that yeah. would be great. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, we'll work at getting that together. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Yeah. This was really great. You guys made me feel at ease, so I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, um, I noticed uh, Teresa's still on the call, so thanks for hanging out. Uh, you texted yeah. me during the game and asked if I have the link to the uh, Poetry Slam, and I, I wasn't able to help because I, I couldn't find it. But uh, okay. can you hear help out um, with that? 
Yeah, so Teresa, I can get your email address from Mike and then I'll send the information on to you for the- Okay, great. I, I was gonna say, I could also send you a link to that article. Yes, the Smithsonian one, I saw it in the in the chat there. I saw that you put that in there. So I'm gonna try and save the chat. Um, and then afterwards, I'm gonna definitely check it out. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm bringing my presentation to that movie night for sure. You know what? It was it was interesting. I had never heard about the bibs, but I know yeah. about Marianne Shad. So mm -hmm. I'm interested. And she is the first woman publisher in Canada. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yes. and but I never heard about this other newspaper. So I'm interested to learn more about that. Exactly. And that's why we do these events because they will spark further learning, right? So yeah. we just want to be the catalyst for bring up a name and it's like, oh, I've never heard that name before. Even some of the names that you see in the trivia that might not be the correct answer. Now it's like, okay, well, if they weren't the answer to that, that question, what did they do? Because there's yeah. maybe a reason why they were part of the quiz and maybe not, just not the answer for that, that question. So, mm -hmm. so that's another good way to look at it as well. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. And just yeah. um, the same, the yeah, papers, we do the um, same kind of feel in the research challenge as well. So we, we kind of go and try to find lesser known historical figures and use that in the research challenge because then it gives more of a conversation and more of a way to learn because we um so we get into groups and actually do a little research within the group and then present what we find so so that's another um if you can shoot off any any some something that you might have learned and you didn't really know you can always send us an uh, an email and we can use that in one of our other events as well so we're always yep. learning together and it's it's really helpful for us too. Yeah. And we come across one name from researching another name and then we'll put that name on a list. So the following year, we make sure that we look into that name and then that's how that's how it evolves. I mean, that's really how organic it can be. And then so, cause Victor, you, you provide us with a lot of the names for those research challenges as well. And we all come away from those events knowing a bit more because we might not have researched it in our own little group, but at the end, one person from the group shares what the group learned to everybody else. So it becomes a bit of a, an extra presentation for, for everybody and everybody comes away with some information. So it's, it's, it's really yeah, good. As I, as I come across these names, you know, I try to keep a list. Absolutely. It doesn't always work out, but I try my best. Yeah, you do. You do, and we and we we always refer to names that you've brought to us. So we really appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm gonna let you all go and enjoy your evening, and uh, we thank you again, and we'll see you at an event very very shortly. Okay. Thank you. Thank Have you a great evening. Okay. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay, everyone. Okay, I've I've been chased Bye. before. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, you're so cute. We'll see you later. Night night. Bye. Have a good Bye. night. Bye. 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 Oh, okay. well, thanks so much for all that. That was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was so much fun. I'm gonna I, go and make sure that the the recording goes to the cloud and yeah. then um I will make sure that, that gets over to you. Alrighty. And uh, we got